when an HD is published, you, we, member countries have three years to implement it. And by implement it, it means to bring it into your national standard, but also to remove anything duplicating or, or conflicting. Ah, right, okay. So even then, with a, when a standard comes through, uh, the standard, even at CENELEC level, even international level, it's always, to some extent, it's always lacking or falling behind what's going on out there in the yeah. Wild West scenarios because technology is moving so fast. Hello and welcome to another CEF Tech Talking podcast. You join us here at the rather romantic location. It's beautiful. Look, we're looking out at the loch here at the Culloden Hotel. The it's beautiful. It's a shame. Sorry, you can't see the loch. Yeah, but yeah. For those of you who are present. watching, you're watching <laughs> us, not the view. <laughs> so don't, don't all rush to YouTube expecting to see what we're looking at. <laughs> but it's very pretty. And mind you, the view here is not too bad either, is it? Well, this, yeah. This, look at this. Surrounded by beauty. Absolutely. Absolute Cascading right. curls of Mark Gentlemen Coles. that we've got amongst us here. You join us here at the end of a tech talk, a brilliant tech talk over the team in Belfast. Mark Cole came all the way to join us as well. So head of technical, still head of technical at the IT, is that right? I've not checked my emails. <laughs> That's the eye you know, is it? <laughs> the bit at the bottom. So Mark's with us, uh, helping us answer all these questions, which has been absolutely fantastic. And we got some really good ones today, didn't we? About we got some great questions today. Capacity, yeah. really you wanted to know about that. Uh, I spoke to another guy there about earthing of installations. Well, and earthing. On a mountain. And... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> He wants to earth a load of cabins on a mountain and he can't even drive it in, what, 200 mil, I think he was yeah. struggling with there. So, yeah, he's got some, got some problems. But talking about problems, we're looking at the code of practice. Now, the code of practice for EV, the IT's code of practice for EV, is the normative document to go to, Dave, isn't it? It's the it one is. that everyone refers to. It is. It's, a, it's got a really good, it's a good document and we, we promoted it a lot because it gives you a really good process of work as well. But obviously it's getting a bit whiskery now. It needs an update, and we know one's coming, Mark. So, what's the what's the plan for the code of practice on EV? How is it going to happen? How are you going to get this update done? What's in it? What can we expect? Well, how can we help? <laughs> can you help? Right, let's start again. Let me try and answer the questions as you pose them. Right, um, what's happening? Well, something's happening, of course. It's all behind the scenes. There will be a DPC period this year. So, in, hold on, just for those listening, yeah, DPC. Yes, DPC's draft for public comment. Draft for public. So, so we're going to be able to get hold of that, are we? That will be in the public domain for uh, those who are interested to comment on it. And to reassure people, that is a malleable thing, isn't it? If, if they comment, that will change. If they comment, every comment will be reviewed by the committee. There's a committee, of course, interested parties from industry, across the, across the entire industry, actually. Um, and they will review the comments that come in, certainly. They will not ignore it. And it might be that the, if there's lots of duplicate comments, and obviously one response, one quick conversation for that particular bank of, of questions, which are all yeah. the same topic, are, are dealt with. But if there's something thorny, and the whole point is that if there's something thorny comes out, something thorny comes yeah. out of the woodwork, then, it, 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 then everybody sits back and we need to think yeah. about this, which is important. So on average, how many comments do you tend to get on a thing like that? Hundreds, thousands. Yeah, it can be hundreds. It can be hundreds. We, with um, I remember when we went towards the. I'm going to see it. It was 17th edition, and there was something like two and a half, two thousand six hundred comments oh, wow. on it. Now, lots of comments were on the same particular topic, yeah. but you did have to review each because every comment's worded differently. It's come from a different yeah. person. Yeah. So then, are they implying the same as that previous comment? Yeah. So you just can't sweepingly push them all aside. You do need to address them. So, you, so this is going to become available, and, and because it's your document, it will be your website people will go to. Is that right for for looking at this one? That's right. Yes. So the IT's website uh, will be the way of, of um, registering your intent to access the document. Now, the the, the current document came out in March. 2020. 2020. 2020. Yeah. So it's your fault about the pandemic, is that right? You launched that with the world stopped. Was that a really daft party, wasn't it? <laughs> the launch party. I'd love to see it was a coincidence. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember, because I was we invited to the launch of it. <laughs> <laughs> event, because we were going go yeah. to go to Central London, mm -hmm. do the event, and then a couple of days earlier, Mark rang and said, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. But I remember that happening. And since then, one thing I think we all are aware of doing these tech talks or being in the industry is how much the EV sector has changed. Mm. Manufacturers are coming up with stuff so quickly now and different ways of doing things, and then we get asked questions on it. So your standard is really going to be playing catch-up again, isn't it? That code of practice that you've got, 
incorporated all those things that manufacturers are doing. It, it is, but it's also, you think about, it, it's a code of practice, it's not a standard, but it is a framework to work to, isn't it? Yeah. And therefore, with um, different manufacturers doing different things and new technology and products coming along, it's a way of funneling, uh, like a recipe, you know, you do the same thing every time, the same way, you use similar components, you come out with the same yeah. cake every time. Well, it's, it's the but, same thing. Would it be true to say, though, that... There was a certain catch-up because the manufacturers, it was Wild, wild West, wasn't it? I mean, <laughs> 2018 it, to 2020, there was a, a whole yeah. lot of stuff coming out that some of it didn't conform really as, as was re- required. Yeah, I think, I think if you look at where the AV charging parts come, different countries are doing different things yeah. and doing it their own way. And then all of a sudden, the EV market in the UK takes off and all of those external countries are starting to say, right, let's, let's chuckle this into the UK market. Yeah, yeah. And we're now saying, hold oh, on, that one does, that one doesn't, that, that one doesn't. So Mark's team have got to try and put all that together. Because you harmonise with Semelec, this European committee. Um, were they ahead with us? Were we behind the EV revolution or were we uh, sort of up with the leaders? Where um, were we? No, I mean, when... When a Senelec HD harmonised document, and if you look at on about, I'm saying on about page nine of BS7671, you'll see a list of all the HDs on which BS7671 is based. Right. You see the HD and you see the date of the HD. So, for instance, off the top of my head, I can remember that the PV is 2016. We were, we were touching on PV okay. earlier. Yeah. Um, with 722, with any of the HDs, when they're published, you have three years because we're a member country of Senelec, and Senelec is a private organisation. It's not part of the EU. Yeah, because there are other countries there that are not part of the EU yeah. that, uh, that, that contribute. But it's all about uh, working to that standardisation, again, platform. Because we don't want to... All right, we, you know, we went through Brexit, but we don't want to start and do things on our own because there's a framework to work to. And there's yeah, they, products to BSENs and, and, yeah. or ENs. So um, when an HD is published, you, we, member countries have three years to implement it. And by implement it, it means to bring it into your national standard, but also to remove anything duplicating or, or conflicting. Ah, oh, right, okay. So even then, with this, when a standard comes through, uh, the standard, even at Senelec level, even international level, it's always, to some extent, it's always lacking or falling behind what's going on out there in the yeah. Wild West scenarios because technology's moving so fast. At yes. a pace, yeah. So the, the EV stuff changes at the HD level, then it gets accepted within three years into BS7671, and then your code of practice has to look at what the standard means no. and then look at what manufacturers do and bring it together. That's right. But the code of practice, because an HD is published, it effectively, effectively becomes a BS HD at that point. Oh, okay. We, we any organisation, can look at the HD and implement that, even though 7671 oh, hasn't got there yet. got ya. Right, so example, it exists as BS HD. Yeah. An example oh, of I that... I didn't know that. An example okay. of that is... Um, Energy efficiency, when, uh, when it was first published by IEC, and I can't remember the year, probably in the early uh, teens, 20 teens, off the top of my head, uh, it was IEC 6036488 energy eight, 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 eight 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 efficiency. Yeah. Now, the IT put, put a publication together, book together, and published it before it had gone into 7671. And when it did go into 7671, it became... Uh, it was informative. It became the yeah, it sat as the annex, didn't it? In the annexes, yeah. yeah. So again, it's a framework right. to work to. So when these documents are published internationally or in Senlec, uh we can you can just adopt them, even though the national standard <coughs> is has not got there yet. So then, you, then like I said, you've got the challenge then of the, we all know standards do one thing and then contractors do another. <laughs> That's a bit hard. <laughs> Not all the time, do they? But we know that that's what happens. Now, the code of practice, what I've found is it takes the very basics that is within 712 and then it adds flesh to the skeleton of the standard. So the code of practice really has got a lot more information in it than just you'd get by reading mm-hmm. section 71 or 722. Very, sorry, 722, not 712. Yeah. That's PV. I'm getting me, getting me, me, me sevens mucked up. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, so from that point of view, the additional stuff that you get in there that comes from the manufacturers, that must be really tricky to get all them in a room because they're not going to tell you what they're, they're do because they don't want other people knowing. No. But to get them all in a room to agree that, yes, this is the way forward, that must be quite hard, Mark. Well, it, it isn't just the manufacturers, of course. It is practitioners too, but it's yeah. also those involved in standards, standardization internationally that are bringing in new concepts 
the concepts that have been discussed and bringing them in, and this is where we're going. Yeah. We need to consider this because it's probably a real problem that has to be dealt with. Mm. And even though the standard discussing that particular issue, the standards committee discussing that issue, haven't got there yet, it's a problem that has been highlighted, and that group within uh, the, you know, this IT committee, for example, will discuss issues like that. So talking about problems that have to be dealt with, <clears throat> we've spent some time this morning talking about the problems of PME, yeah. losing, losing the neutral, recirculating neutral currents, and there's a lot of reference in 722 and the index about what you do when working with PME supplies. So what's your thinking about where that will all go? It is, it's not going away. The, 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 the lost pen conductor issue is not going away, and uh, we won't ever get a, a clean sweep of a new network installed because even if a new network's installed right. in 20 years' time, it will start yeah. failing again. So <laughs> it, 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 it is what it, it is what it is. So we have to. We believe within within the standards committees I'm involved with that we mitigate that on the installation side because there's a clean yeah. energy there for, yeah. for those using it. So does the code of practice can it jump ahead of Amendment Two of the regs? Can it can it jump ahead of seven two two and propose solutions that, that I think it does already. Yeah, it does already su yeah. suggest that if you're looking at an area where there's simultaneously exposed stuff, you do this or you do that. There's a flow chart in it that really helps you reduce the risks associated with those PME supplies. Now this is where again that's a great example of it is seeing ahead of what really what's what's being done now, and this is where a code of practice really gives you an awful lot more than what just be a 7671 because mm -hmm. 7671 will tell you you can do this this or this but really the code of practice goes beyond that and gives you a lot more information mm. so it's going to it's always going to give you a lot more solutions the code of practice whereas you could argue that BS 7671 creates the problems <laughs> <laughs> Because a standard is a standard. It, it's a, it's it's. This is what you must achieve. Yes, so you can use these How devices. You do it, yeah. These devices, yeah. and then after that, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's and that's where the code of practice. Is, yeah. Let's not also forget that the code of practice. I mean, it is was done back in twenty twenty. There's been loads of changes there. You and I have been talking about this at Tech Talks, Dave. I mean, just just look at what how we think about RCDs now. Yeah. The code of practice doesn't go too much at the money into to RCDs, but you're gonna have to. That, surely that bit's gonna have to be looked at with what we now know about RCDs. Yeah. Type B is pretty much what people are saying. Do they go for standard? Surely the, the well, code of practice has got to look at all of those. There's an interesting thing it? there, isn't it? Because when the standard was first introduced, the code of practice was introduced. Type Bs were pretty expensive, but now they True. are coming down yeah. in price. Oh yeah, they are. So yeah. they become a much more viable option, and they're obviously quite a bulletproof option, really, aren't they? I mean, they they solve that problem fairly well. So maybe the maybe it would be that there'd be a minimum requirement now in the standard, or, or a minimum recommended. Install it, installation. But Mark, you were saying earlier about um, some of the changes may have to revolve around such things as petrol station forecourts and the large uh, yeah. power charges going in there. So what sort of yeah. thinking was behind that comment? Well, of course, with, uh, with a petrol filling station, you've got the risk of, of explosion because <laughs> of the spilt product, of course. And, and, uh, and if you have, if you have uh, charge points in the vicinity, yeah. You're talking high currents, and there's 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 a risk there too. So th there needs to be discussions between the two areas about how that's about how that's mitigated. Yeah. And, and then uh, and then of course you've got it isn't just the what's happening in the air. I suppose it, it can to some extent, but it's the supply, isn't it? Because you might have uh, you might be given um, a heavy heavy duty high capacity supply for your charging area, and it could be PME. <laughs> Or not. Oh, but, or not. <laughs> so you have to, because in close, close proximity to a... Yeah. A, 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 a Hazardous area. Station, yeah, you you've can't. Got to consider the earthing arrangements oh. and you couldn't diversion and, and... Well, so we we were lucky enough, Dave and I, to visit Proteus. And uh, Proteus, for, for those who know, they're, they're not just consuming, it's single-phase consuming, it's Proteus do some really big engineering stuff. Serious don't stuff. We saw yeah. some massive projects going through the, the workshop there. Now... A lot of the, the everything they were doing was around petrol forecourts being converted into charging forecourts. Mm -hmm. And this was all, as you mentioned there, open pen technology. That MATE technology is what mm -hmm. they, were, they were incorporating into the installation to ensure that there were no problems. As you said, they're supplying it on PME. We're then telling them you can't take PME anywhere near it. And they had some fantastic solutions there. So the code of practice, again, that's probably one area we've got to see. These... 
Open Pen or True Pen or Matty or whatever they're called, again, the, the code of practice has got to recognise these now, hasn't it? Mm. I don't think they were really around two years ago, were they? When This is what's happening. Yeah. This is what's happening. More manufacturers are coming on board. And, and we've talked about in uh, to, to, today's event that different manufacturers have different... Um, functionality built into their products. Yeah, they do. And you yeah. look at one and look at another, <laughs> which is going to be suitable for my application here. Mm. So, uh, as again, we've talked about, IET put, put a, a, a committee together to, to, to develop a, a specification uh, to state how charge point equipment should behave when certain uh, incidents happen. So, voltage appear because of a lost pen conductor. Yeah. So, the yeah. specification will say, when this happens, this must happen. Got you. So therefore, if that specification, when, when, when published, if it's rolled out, every manufacturer takes it on, they can then put in their functionality, whatever they want to do, because people don't know, do I need an earth electrode with this charge? Do I not? <laughs> yeah. The, Is it the, just a... Uh, we get the questions, don't we? So, <laughs> so that's just a simple example of, 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 of the differences out there and what needs to happen. Yeah. To me. Because the contractor, the installer, just wants to go into one of your branches and say, I'll have this. You're right. I'm going to put yeah. it there. And that's, that's it. all you really should be able to do, but it isn't as easy as that now. And that's the intention that we've put a group of people across the industry to come up with that specification. And it's pretty imminently going to, 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 to DPC. It's, it's really not far off. I think, it's, uh, I think it's final stages at the moment. So you've got another DPC coming out for that as well. So not only the yeah. DPC is going to be available for the actual code of practice, oh. but a DPC, probably not really for the, for the installer though, is it? That DPC will probably be for the manufacturer. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, for, for, right. for those right. guys to, to ensure that there's compliance there. So there's lots coming from you around the electric vehicle, which we totally expect, <laughs> don't we really? If you want to know more about that, document for public comment that is going to highlight all the potential changes and it's true to say they are potential changes not all of them will make it you may find some new ones come in after people do start to make comments and we would encourage all of you to take the opportunity to make sure you do comment on anything that is available for you to do so i know for well when it does come out mark we'll be making a bit of noise about it so expect in your inbox the opportunity to go to the link that will take you to those and please We'd encourage everyone, wouldn't we, I think? Just get involved. Mm. Mix it all up a little bit. Make them, make them read all the comments. And again, make sure the comments are nice. It can't just be, I hate RCD. No, uh, that, we, we, <laughs> it has to be a yeah, proper it's comment. Be a, a, a proper it? comment. Some solution yeah. to or, a, an issue. Yeah. Or, you know, um, not everybody would have a solution to something, but at least a, a, a comment. Look, I'm faced with this. The, 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 the publication is saying that. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. And... Uh, and there's no proposal there, but at least it's it's a clear indication as to what's being faced. Yeah. Because again, I said earlier that we, me, uh, I've been off the tools for countless years, and I, you lose touch with what's go, what's what's going on. And everybody in these committees is 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 in quite the same. They're very, yeah. I don't know any hands-on installers that are involved with it. I don't blame them. I went on site the other day. It was filthy. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't moaned about anything for so much in a long time. <laughs> I got covered, didn't I? And insulation as well. A day's hard oh, work insulation. And you were finished, I, was, I was itching all over the place. <laughs> I was. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you very much for listening to another CF Tech Talking Podcast. Mark, it's been fantastic for you, Dev. Uh, if you like what you're listening to or what you're seeing, please subscribe, share, and let everyone know about it. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on another CF Tech Talking Podcast soon. 